seconds. Nate, wrong show, honey. Joe. Contestants, how you doing? Welcome to our show. Why don't you tell me how many people are going to be playing this game? Okay. So you're playing with yourself, huh? Please. Sorry, just type your name in, okay? Right, Helen, it's sports. Gucci, Gucci. Oh, oh sure, sure. <laughs> okay, you want to do a seven-question game, or you want 21? Oh, okay, got God, it. it 30 seconds. Okay, your buzzer is the letter B, as in better luck next time. They resemble that remark. Oh, you must have behind the glass, Schmitty. 20 seconds. 20 seconds, oh, shit. Uh, okay, when you know an answer, buzz in. If you don't, don't. But if you buzz, you only got a few seconds to pick one of the choices, or you're going to lose cash, all right? Good luck. Nine. Okay, after the show. All right, um, lose the desktop, please. Thank you very much. Um, go to black. Okay, keep grabbing. All right, guy, you're on. Because cardiopulmonary resuscitation can be fun. Just you and me for this show, huh? All right, let's rock and roll. How about it? Hit me with the category. One. And the category is animal rights activists gone bad. Okay, this isn't going to be easy, but you're looking at $3,000. In the past, people for the ethical treatment of animals have probably boycotted sports that they feel disregard animal rights. Imagine that PETA decides to boycott any sport that uses a trap of any kind. Based on this requirement alone, which of these sports would escape the wrath of PETA? Drag racing, football, synchronized swimming, or golf? The length of the track they use to electronically time the cars is called the trap in drag racing. Although I can't imagine drag racers go too fast wearing taffeta and high heels. Let's see what a good player would have answered. Synchronized swimming doesn't use a trap. Although synchronized swimming has never been the same since the folks at PETA insisted that the live sharks be removed from the pool. Sheesh. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Number two. Number two. Here's your category. Brady's on ice. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. Hang on tight. Here we go. If each of the Brady kids adopted the nickname of a so-called original six NHL franchise one morning at breakfast, whom would you not see at the dinner table that night? Peter Penguin Brady, Bobby Bruin Brady, Marsha Red Wings Brady, or Cindy Blackhawk Brady? The Penguins are not one of the so-called original six. And Mike and Carol warned Peter about showing off his penguin at the dinner table. Okay, pick a category. The category is, Mom, there's a head in my cereal. Right here, 1,000 bucks for a right answer. All right, get yourself set, it's time. If Alphabets put out a cereal called Lettered Helmets of the NFL, which of the following teams wouldn't be in it because their helmets don't have letters on them? San Francisco 49ers, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Green Bay Packers, or Chicago Bears? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have Buccaneers on their helmets. <laughs> And Buccaneers are people! Okie doke, well, give me a category. Score! Number four! The category is 101 Reasons to Wear a Jog Bra. All right, $3,000 is riding on this one. Psst, hey, over here. Did you know that Stella Walsh, the 1932 Olympic track and field medalist, had a secret? Based on Stella Walsh's secret, which movie might you assume is about her? I Married a Monster from Outer Space, Personal Best, The Stepford Wives, or The Crying Game? Yes, over 40 years after meddling in the Olympics for the first time, it was discovered Stella Walsh was a man. Hey, I got a question. Didn't Stella ever shower with the team? Hello? Category time. What's it gonna be? The corner pocket, number five. 
The category behind this question is, who are you calling yeller? This question's worth $2,001 bills. Okay, hang tight, put your finger on your buzzer, here's the question. If they make a sequel to Old Yeller featuring the Old Yeller from the world of sports, how should the picture end? Old Yeller wins the Daytona 500, Old Yeller wins the Kentucky Derby, Old Yeller bats 486, or Old Yeller wins at Augusta National? And that would be wrong. Here's what you should have guessed. Cale Yarbrough won the 1977 Daytona 500 in a Chevy Laguna he nicknamed Old Yeller. Hey, I wonder if they'll have him shoot the car at the end of the movie. How about it? Hit me with the category. Uh-oh, best putts fits mine horn. It's time for a Tinker Leg Tesla! Here's your gibberish category. Why you shouldn't play under bridges. Five grand is the opening value for this gibberish question. Okay, now remember the faster you solve this puzzle, the more money you win. All right, all you billy goats, tell me something. With what phrase does this rhyme? Troll! Ooh, you think you got it. Okay, start typing and hit return when you're finished. The hobbit dribbles up the side. The ogre's down. Troll! You know, when I said I wanted to go to a Giants game, that's not what I meant. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Under the rim with question seven. And the category is... Drop the ball, sucker. And we are talking 1,000 bucks for this question. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. Say the members of TV's The A-Team were forced to wear Major League ball caps at all times. Because it's not adorned with an A, which of the following team's caps should they not wear? California, Oakland, Texas, or Atlanta? The Rangers do not have an A on their cap. <laughs> but their cap would be perfect for Mr. T. Fool. Okay, pick a category. This one's gonna be pigskin and problem acne. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. The football career of Plainfield Teachers College is analogous to which episode of The Brady Bunch? Peter finds a look-alike. The boys won't let the girls in their clubhouse. Joe Namath makes a guest appearance, or Jan makes up an imaginary boyfriend. Though scores for its football games were called into the newspaper wire services, Plainfield Teachers College never existed. <laughs> It happened back in 1941 as a gag perpetrated by a group of businessmen. No, one of them was not named George Glass. Category time, what's it gonna be? The German judge gives a nine. The category? I want my quarterback. And this one's gonna be worth $3,000. Everything in place? Cause here she comes. If you had a quarter for every quarterback taken before Dan Marino in the 1983 draft, what could you buy? A $5 draft beer at a bar, a $1.25 subway token, a 25 cent pack of juicy fruit, or nothing? Five QBs went before Marino. John Elway, Jim Kelly, Tony Eason, Ken O'Brien, and Todd Blackledge. That's enough for a $1.25 subway token. <laughs> so, you could buy a subway token. And I'm guessing Marino could buy the subway. Okie doke, give me a category. <laughs> Hang ten. Here's the category. Football and landmarks. 1,000 bucks for a right answer. Okay, imagine it's late in the big game and the score is tied at zero. The quarterback drops back and holds the ball aloft to pass it. Suddenly a running back grabs the ball out of his hand and runs it 20 yards for a touchdown. What just happened? The Giants ran a Colossus of Rhodes, the Browns ran a Cleveland Steamer, the Patriots ran a Statue of Liberty, or the 49ers ran a Gold Rush. The Statue of Liberty. It works especially well when the other team is feeling tired, poor, or huddled. Okay, that's the end of round one. Let's move on to round two. Okay, listen up. In round two, everything's worth double. You understand what double means? Times two? Okay, let's go. How about it? Hit me with the category. Eleven. The name of this category is... 
One of the players is hung like a horse. It's going to be worth $4,000. Ready on the trigger? Pull. According to the U.S. Polo Association, which one of the following groups has the correct number to begin a regulation polo game? The Three Amigos, the Magnificent Seven, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, or Roy Rogers and Dale Evans? You need four horsemen, or women, to start a regulation polo game. <laughs> Substituting for Prince William this afternoon will be famine. Okay, pick a category. Uh-oh, Miss Butt-Tit Slime Chore! Once again, it's time for a Flicker is the Star! All right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. New and improved insect diet. And if you're really fast, you can get up to 10,000 bucks for this gibberish question. Now you're gonna have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, but I'll be taking a little bit of money away every second and a half. Okay, tell me, what cliche does this rhyme with? Spiced flies in dish fast. Okay, let's see if you know it. Start typing and hit return when you're done. Uh. <laughs> well, I guess we know who's nice around here. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. The thrill of victory, the agony of 13. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Call me irresponsible. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. All right, let's get this ball rolling. In the 1954 Cotton Bowl, Tommy Lewis of Alabama made an unusual tackle. If his famous tackle became commonplace, what would be an appropriate name for it? The harrying helmet throw, the bench warmer blitz, the electric slide, or the pantsless clothesline? Lewis got overexcited, jumped off the bench, and tackled Rice University halfback Dick Mogul as he ran down the sideline. And then later, he tried to kick a field goal from the locker room. Category time, what's it gonna be? Come on, Rev, who's falling? 14! 14! <coughs> Sit down! And this category is... Basketball and body work. And we are talking 4,000 big ones. So, you feeling anxious? Me too. Let's go. If former L.A. Lakers star Jerry West opened a chain of auto repair stores named after his old basketball nickname, what would the shops be called? Mr. Transmission, Mr. Sparkplug, Mr. Piston, or Mr. Clutch? Because of his brilliant play in crucial situations, Jerry's teammates used to call him Mr. Clutch. <laughs> And it's an appropriate name for lots of players these days. Can someone please tell the guys to quit adjusting themselves at the foul line? Okay, pick a category. Love 15. Here's your category. Poor Mountaineer Meals. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. On your marks, get set, here's the question. If Uncle Jed from the Beverly Hillbillies went shooting at some skeet, what kind of vittles would Granny most likely put on the dinner table? Shuffleboard souffle, clay pigeon casserole, cork ball soup, or snowshoe crab cakes? Hey, who are you? Rongy Rongerson? Shoulda picked this. When you go gunning for skeet, you're aiming at clay pigeon targets. I think Uncle Jed was just sick of eating roadkill. She doggies. How about it? Hit me with the category. 16, 16, 16, 16, 16. The category behind this question is... Hey, I didn't vote for him. And this is $4,000 here. As a young comedian, Chevy Chase made us laugh by falling down like President Gerald Ford. Pure genius, let me tell you. If Chevy Chase were to do a truly accurate imitation of President Ford, each of the following would have to be part of his act, except which? Coaching boxing at Yale, running hurdles in the Pan American Games, turning down a contract from the Packers, or being voted MVP of his college football team. Sawing better! <laughs> Let's take a look at the big money answer. Former President Ford did not run the hurdles, and thank God. Okie doke, give me a category. 9 plus 8, 10 plus 7, 
And the category is your front row seats or your life, matey. Six thousand dollars is riding on this one. Suppose famous pirate Captain Kidd were a huge sports fan. If Captain Kidd had lived in Pittsburgh during the 1920s and 1930s and had wanted to watch his fellow pirates on a team called the Pirates, which pro sport could he not have seen? Baseball, basketball, football, or hockey? There has been no Pittsburgh Pirates pro basketball team. No surprise there. You ever try to slam dunk with a parrot on your shoulder? Okay, pick a category. 18. The category is Checking Miss Ohio. And this one's 4,000 bucks for a right answer. Okay, coming at you. Heads up. Miss America pageant is to Miss Congeniality as NHL is to what? Lady Bing Trophy, Art Ross Trophy, Frank Selke Trophy, or Hart Memorial Trophy? The Lady Bing Trophy is awarded to hockey players who combine effective competition with good manners and sportsmanship. And if Miss Congeniality were to play hockey, before long she wouldn't have any teeth to put Vaseline on. Category time, what's it gonna be? Question 19. The category is, why am I doing this again? You get this question right, you pocket six grand. All right, pay attention. Here comes the question. If the baseball team from Abbott and Costello's Who's On First comedy routine completed an around the horn double play, in what order would they handle the ball? Because, just because, because I said so, I don't know what, who, who today, I don't know, or tomorrow, today, maybe. <laughs> who today, you don't know. <laughs> Well, in case you're curious about the correct answer, I don't know to what to who. That's third to second to first, and it's throwing around the horn. Hey, mister, can I have your autograph? Who, me? Yes. What? I don't know. Third base. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Swapping. And the category is... Sorry, sir, but shorts are mandatory. A right answer will get you two Gs for this question. Whoa, by my watch, it's about time for Kevin Costner to blow $100 million on another box office fiasco. Imagine he wants to go back to the tried-and-true sports movie formula, but he feels like baseball has been overworked. Assuming Kevin wants to stick to sports that actually exist, which of the following is not an option? Speedball Earp, Robin Hood, Prince of Boarball, Corf Ball of Dreams, or Wet Earth Netball? There is no such sport as boar ball. <laughs> but if there were, I'm sure Kevin Costner would be the prince of it. How about it? Hit me with the category. It's the Jackaroonie Attack. Oh, you already got the rules down, huh? Well, let's not waste time. Match on this. Scoring by the numbers. Do you think you're gonna score in this attack? Let's find out. I think of superlatives like great, amazing, fabulous, sports trivia geek with no social life, stuff like that. But don't thank me, because the real truth is... You don't know Jack! Okay, great show, everybody. Um, cute commercials, thank you, and cookie. 
What's the story with the contestants? Uh, listen, excuse me. Uh, whenever you feel like playing again, you just gotta let me know, all right? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Live at the Power Dome. Celebrity slap fight. <laughs> the biggest female stars square off in a face slapping showdown. Shut up, you bitch! You shut up! Oh, shut Don't up! Miss the world title match between that girl who played the prostitute on Kojak and that girl who took her blouse off in Meatballs 4. The biggest celebrity, the biggest fight. You can't sit down because if you're on your seat, these girls will get you off. Darn it! Sliced it again. Ah, you're not keeping your head down. Uh, I know, but I can't. Because your hairpiece keeps slipping. What? How did you know I wear a hairpiece? Come on, Joe. Everyone knows. Stick a flag in it and you could spot that thing teeing off from a par five. Here, try mine. It's from the folks at Mr. Divot. Wow, it, it feels like grass. It is grass. That's the genius behind the Mr. Divot hairpiece system. I can grow my own replacements, and it comes in lots of designer colors. Midsummer burn, autumn harvest, and new Kentucky bluegrass. Oh, sounds great, but, I mean, will it come loose while I'm golfing? Not even with the nine iron. Come on, let's go replace that divot. You mean Mr. Divot. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Divot hair pieces are available at all fine salons and garden centers. I guess it shook my confidence. Sometimes at the club, I worried that the other guys were, were making fun of my pinkies. I knew my pinkies were a problem, but I didn't know they were that bad. I'm a weak pinky. I have had weak pinkies all of my life. They're frail, they're yes, limp. The contract make was fun signed, and then he leaned in to shake my hand, and damn it, my pinky screwed it up for me again. In today's world, nothing commands more respect than a strong, sexy pinky. But piano lessons are expensive, and who has time to go to the gym? Well, now you can get the powerful pinkies you've always dreamed of in just minutes a day, right in your own home. With this, the Power Pinker. It looks like a finger prison. Don't just sit there clicking that remote, wondering what it would be like. Dare to experience true pinky power. I own my own company and business is booming. <laughs> if a client gets antsy, I just challenge him to a friendly finger wrestling match. Finally, I can face my pinky. Every now and then, I'll be in a bar and I'll catch a woman trying to check out my pinky. That's when I know she's mine. The Power Pinker. Why be ashamed of your pinkies a second longer? Hey guys, when you go to the store, are you sick of seeing rows and rows of little pink packages labeled just for women? It used to be a man's world. What the hell happened? Man Packs, feminine hygiene products made just for men. Constructed from an indestructible space age polymer, Man Packs products are perfect for the man on the go. And they only come in one color, camouflage. Look for Man Packs products anywhere you buy beer. Man Packs puts the men back in menstruation. Period.